Hi everyone, this is the story of my abusive mother-in-law and my useless husband who never protected me. I'm using fake names because I don't want to be identified. Sharing my story is one thing, but dealing with real-life drama is another, so I'd rather stay anonymous. Let's say my name is Peyton, my husband is Grant, and my mother-in-law is Joanne. My grandma, Lily, is the only reason I'm still here today. Let me start from the beginning. Grant was a pretty good boyfriend, and I was deeply in love with him, ready to marry him. So when he proposed, I said yes right away. But after that, everything changed. I started noticing red flags. Grant and his mother were extremely close, and it was clear that Joanne controlled him. Joanne was the one who started causing problems. She lived with us and depended on her son for everything. One day, she came to me with some papers and said, Peyton, you need to sign these papers right now. It's better for you if you do. I asked, what are these papers, Joanne? She replied, this is a prenup that you both need to sign. It says that in case of a divorce, neither of you can claim anything from each other. Sign it now. I was shocked and asked, did you really make a prenup without even talking to us? This is humiliating, Joanne. Why would you do that? She said, I did this so you can't take my son's money if you divorce. You earn less than him and this house is his. We can't trust you to not take everything. I was furious and said, This is insane, Joanne. I'm not the bad person you think I am. I'm not signing this just like that. I'm insulted that you didn't even talk to us about it. To my surprise, Grant said, Actually, I know about the prenup. It's not a big deal, Peyton. If you're not with me for money, you shouldn't have a problem signing it. I was shocked that Grant and Joanne discussed this without telling me. No, I wasn't with Grant for his money. I didn't earn much, but I had a big inheritance coming my way, which I hadn't told Grant about yet. Grant and I fought for days, and Joanne kept insulting me for not signing the papers. I eventually went to my grandma for help. She listened to everything and then said, Honey, are you sure you want to marry this man? I don't think he's the right one for you. You two aren't even married yet, and he's already making plans with his mother against you. I replied, it's just this one problem, Grandma. I really love Grant, and he loves me too. I can't imagine marrying anyone else. He's a good man. Grandma said, if you've made up your mind, then go ahead and sign the prenup. I'll have my lawyer look it over, but I have one request. Never tell them that your grandparents are millionaires. I don't want them to know. I said, I haven't told them anything yet, Grandma, but why don't you want me to say it? She replied, I understand things better than you, Peyton. You're seeing them through rose-colored glasses. Your grandfather and I worked hard to build this fortune, and I don't want anyone taking advantage of you and your money. I assured her, Grandma, you don't have to worry. I won't tell them anything since you asked me not to. Besides, Grant is a good man, and he'd never do that. If his mother gets out of hand, I'm sure he'll protect me. But I was wrong. Grant turned out to be a horrible man, and his mother was even worse than I knew. I gave in and signed the prenup, and later realized it was a wise decision. As soon as we got married, Joan started to abuse me regularly. Even after signing the prenup, she verbally and sometimes physically abused me. I'm too ashamed to talk about everything she did, but there's one incident I need to share because it was the turning point in my marriage. One day, after I got home from work, Joan stormed into my room with a smirk on her face. She handed me a big bag of clothes and demanded that I wash them. I didn't protest because I was used to her behavior. I knew that if I refused, she'd tell Grant, and they'd both verbally abuse me. It was routine. So I picked up the heavy bag even though it was hard for me. While I was walking down the hall, Joanne tripped me and I fell. I hurt my ankle and screamed in pain. Joanne just laughed and walked away. After putting some ice on my ankle, I called Grant and told him, Grant, I fell and hurt my ankle. Your mother tripped me today. I had taken her abuse for a long time and finally told Grant, you need to do something. She's crossed the line. But Grant didn't believe me. He said, don't make up lies about mom, Peyton. She would never do something like that. You just want her out of the house and don't want to do your chores. Stop lying and trying to defame her. I pleaded, I'm not lying, Grant, please believe me. But he replied, don't waste my time, Peyton. Go back and do the chores mom gave you. I don't want to hear another complaint. Then he hung up on me. Grant never stood up for me and always acted like I was the problem. 
I usually kept quiet because I didn't want him to leave me. But this time, I'd had enough. I just couldn't take it anymore. I was secretly seeing a therapist with my grandma's help, and their abuse was becoming too much to handle. It was then that I realized I needed to get out. To make things worse, Joanne sent me nasty texts, saying I deserved what she did and that Grant would never speak against her. I was furious and decided I needed revenge. The opportunity came when my grandma passed away. I was heartbroken but relieved because she had been in a lot of pain. I stayed strong, knowing she was finally free and reunited with my granddad. Grant didn't help me at all when my grandma died. He didn't even show up to the funeral, but when he found out I inherited $250 million, he was in shock and suddenly started being extra nice to me. When we got home the next day, another surprise was waiting for me. Joanne was at the foot of my bed, looking unusually sweet. It was creepy to find her in my room, watching me while I slept. I couldn't believe what was happening. I asked, What are you doing here, Joanne? No one told me you were coming today, and why were you staring at me while I was sleeping? That's really creepy. She replied, Oh, I came early to help you with the chores. I made you some tea, and it's right beside your bed. I know how much you love tea, so I got a special batch for you. I said, you still haven't answered why you were in my room while I was sleeping. It's honestly creepy, Joanne. She said I was trying to massage your feet, Peyton. I know you hurt your feet carrying my laundry that day. They must be so sore, so I thought I could massage them for you. I was shocked and said, you literally tripped me that day, Joanne. How dare you come here and try to massage my feet? Don't you have any shame? She brushed it off, saying, oh, don't be so dramatic. It was an honest mistake. I didn't know you would fall or that the load was heavy. But I've already massaged your foot to make up for it, didn't I? I was furious and said, You think massaging my foot will make up for all the abuse? You're insane, Joanne. Get out of my room. I don't want to see your face right now, she replied sweetly. All right, I'll be in the kitchen making you breakfast. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. I'll also make sure Grant has everything he needs. You just take your time and freshen up. Then she left the room, acting like everything was fine. Her sudden change in attitude made my head spin, even as I lay there in bed. I felt like she had invaded my privacy and was acting crazy. Money can make people do strange things, and Joanne proved it. Grant must have told her to avoid my inheritance, which is why she came to visit. But neither Grant nor Duran knew that none of them would get my money. I made sure of that. I got out of bed and dressed in my best clothes, it was my day for revenge, and I wanted to look my best. My therapy had been working well, and I finally had the confidence to stand up for myself. I went to the kitchen with my bag, which had some important papers I needed to send out today. I guess you can tell what I was about to do. I found Grant and Duran in the kitchen. They looked very happy and were whispering to each other. When they saw me, their smiles got even bigger. Grant pulled out a chair for me while Jan prepared a plate. I said, why did you make breakfast today? I could have done it myself. You didn't have to go to the trouble. Grant replied, that's nonsense. I'm happy to do this for you, Peyton. It's no big deal. Jan added, it's just breakfast. My mom can help you from now on. Once we sell the house and buy a mansion, I'll find a housekeeper. Until then, my mom can take care of everything. I said, you think buying my medicine is a waste of money, but hiring a housekeeper is okay. How do you plan to buy a mansion? Have you been robbing a bank? Grant replied, don't be ridiculous. We have plenty of money now. You just got a huge inheritance from your grandmother. Grant was right. Finally, we're millionaires now, he said. We don't have to worry about money anymore. We can do whatever we want now. Jan said, yeah, I've been thinking about quitting my job. Maybe we can take a vacation and have some fun. What do you think? I laughed loudly at what they said. I couldn't believe my ears. It had only been a day since I received my inheritance, and they were already making plans. They really thought I would just give them the money and let them do whatever they wanted. Did they think a day of fake kindness could erase years of abuse? Joanne and Grant looked uncomfortable with my laughter. They probably realized how ridiculous their plans sounded, thinking I would magically forgive them. After laughing for a few seconds, I said, My God, it's been just one day since I got my inheritance, and look how much you've changed. Money really does make a difference, doesn't it? Grant replied, 
Let's not dwell on the past. We had no idea you were so lucky. We would have treated you better if we knew. Joanne added, yes, you shouldn't hide things from your husband and in-laws, Peyton. That was very sneaky of you. Anyway, what should we do with all this money? I was thinking about buying a house in the Caribbean. Grant chimed in, don't just say house, say mansion or villa. We could even go for a penthouse. That would suit our status better. We're millionaires after all. All my friends will be so jealous of me. I listened to their chatter and then casually took out the documents I had hidden in my folder. Joanne and Grant looked at me expectantly, as if I was giving them papers that would make the money theirs. But they were in for a surprise. Holding the papers, I said, Let me correct you guys. We're not millionaires. I am a millionaire now. The money is mine. I got it as my inheritance. Grant said, Yes, you got the money, but we share everything. We're married after all, so you should share your money with me. Joanne added, Yes, and as your mother-in-law and only surviving family, you should share the money with me too. We're family after all. You're like a daughter to me, just like Grant is my son. I replied, It's funny how I've suddenly become your daughter. Yesterday I was just the woman your son married. Anyway, don't get too excited. We won't be family anymore. Not that we ever really were. Grant looked confused. What do you mean, Peyton? I'm your mother-in-law, so I'm family. I said, how can you be my mother-in-law if I'm not married to your son anymore? If Grant loses his title as my husband, you'll be nothing to me. Grant asked, what do you mean, Peyton? Why won't I be your husband anymore? What's going on? I calmly replied, I filed for divorce. I did it the day after my grandma died. I won't be staying with you anymore, Grant. You're a terrible husband and don't deserve to be one. I threw the divorce papers on the table. Grant and Jan read the papers, and their eyes widened in shock. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. They looked at each other, worried. I guess they never thought I'd have the strength to file for divorce. Grant said, What is this, Peyton? Why have you filed for divorce? This doesn't make any sense. You think I'm too weak to leave an abusive marriage and stay stuck in it forever? Why are you surprised, Grant? I told you this was coming. I told you the very day Joanne tripped me. My God, why are you still stuck in the past? I've already apologized for that, and I can't change what happened. You need to be more forgiving. This isn't a big enough problem to cause a divorce. Mom has already made up for it. So Joanne, you admit you tripped me and all you say is to get over it? Listen, I'm divorcing you, and you won't get a cent of my inheritance. I can't believe I love someone as awful as you, Grant, and I'm ashamed I tried to impress a monster like you, Joanne. But this abuse ends now. We are definitely getting a divorce, and we can do it the easy way or the hard way. Suddenly, Grant and Joanne looked very angry. They didn't like that I called them out on their behavior. They knew I was serious since I had already filed for divorce. It wasn't a threat to get what I wanted. I meant it. But now that I had a lot of money, they said, What's the point of divorcing me, Peyton? You have more money than me. But your inheritance is a marital asset, so I'll get half of it anyway. You might get half, but most of it will go to the lawyers, I replied. Did you forget about the prenup you and your mother forced me to sign? I'm sure my dear mother-in-law can remind you. She was adamant that we sign a prenup. It suddenly hit them that they had messed up. They had no idea I'd become a millionaire one day. The prenup was supposed to protect them because they knew no sane woman would stay with them after their abuse. But this time, they just played themselves. The prenup was a long time ago, they said. I'll talk to a lawyer and see what we can do. We won't let you walk away with all that money. You're doing this to threaten us. You can't do anything to us, Peyton. We'll take your money and do what we please with it. So you plan to fight me in court? I asked. Don't worry, Peyton. We'll make this hard for you. You can't get divorced without my signature, remember that. Really, Grant, you're going to make this difficult for me? That's not a problem. I'm prepared for everything. I have some leverage of my own. What do you mean, Peyton? Joanne asked. Joanne, remember how you admitted to tripping me and abusing me in those texts? I'll use them to file a report with the police. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? No, no, no. You won't do that to me. I'll delete all the texts. Don't worry, Joanne, I've already saved them and sent them to some friends. Trust me, I'm fully capable of reporting you to the police. I can also show how Grant knew and did nothing to protect me. 
It'll be a tough battle for you in divorce court. Joanne and Grant immediately started apologizing, realizing the trouble they were in. They thought I had let go of the incident, but I was just waiting for the right moment. Now, Joanne and Grant were in deep trouble and didn't know what to do. I took the divorce papers and left the house, planning to collect my things the next day. Grant and Joanne tried to stop me, saying, Don't walk away from us, Peyton. Let's sit and talk about this. We can handle the situation like adults without making any rash decisions. Where will you go anyway? Let's talk about it. I'm moving into my grandmother's house. It's already in my name. I'll be living there while waiting for Grant to decide on the divorce. I'm taking the papers with me so you can't damage them and make me file again. As for my things, I've taken pictures of everything, so don't even think about damaging or getting rid of anything. Grant and Joanne kept trying to stop me, but I had already called a friend who was waiting for me outside. I got into a car and drove off. Grant and Joanne stood at the door, staring at us the whole time. After arriving at my new place, I contacted a moving company to bring my things from a house. In the months that followed, Grant and Joanne tried their best to change my mind. I kept reminding them about going to the cops because Grant didn't sign the divorce papers. Grant did talk to a lawyer, who told him that the prenup was solid and that he had no way out. After being threatened by me multiple times, Grant was forced to sign the divorce papers. He didn't want his mom in jail, and he knew I would never give him another chance. Grant and Joanne are not talking to each other now. Why? Because Grant didn't take the divorce well and started blaming Joanne for causing problems between us. He was sure Joanne was the reason he missed out on being a millionaire. After countless fights, he ended up kicking her out with nothing. Since Joanne lived off Grant's money, she was left homeless and broke. Last I heard, Joanne was in a homeless woman's shelter with no idea what to do. I made sure everyone knew what horrible people Joanne and Grant were, so they were isolated from others. No one talks to them anymore. As for me, I'm enjoying my new life and watching the aftermath. I'm still living at my grandmother's place because it holds sentimental value to me. I donated some of my inheritance to women's help centers and plan to do more. The rest of the money is invested and secured for my future family. I'm still working at my old job because I don't want to sit idle. Life is good so far, and I'm hopeful I'll meet someone who deserves me.